Good evening, everybody. I apologize. I am late. The time change and um, different things going on. But again, I want to be obedient to the Lord and do what Holy Spirit has led me to do on tonight. I'm hoping I won't be on here long, but of course, I'm not in control. So I am grateful to be on here talking about revival. And so many times when people think about revival, hey, Krista, when people think about revival, hey, Shelly, um, Apple, hi, they think about church services and two and three times a week and just being in church all the time. But that's not what truly revival is. Revival means to come back alive, to restore, to replenish and to replant. To bring back something that has died. And so I remember one time when I was on, um, I was in church one day and I saw these giant, I think they're called defibrillators that they put on a person's heart when a person's heart has had a heart attack or has um, died or whatever. And they put the defibrillators on them and they, they give them an electric shock to bring them back to life. And so I saw these big defibrillators, and I was at this church, and I don't say it was church, but I saw them, blessings, blessings, prophetess Tanya. And I saw these big defibrillators on the outside of the church, and I heard the Lord say, I am bringing back to life my body. My body has been dead. My body has been into things that it shouldn't have been. My body has been raped. My body has been um, taken advantage of. My body has all these things going on in it, except for what I want to go in, go be done. And so I began to hear God say, today, declare that today is a new beginning of revival. And for us to understand, revival don't mean church services and just praising God for 50 hours and just all these different things, but revival truly means to bring back those things that are lost, to bring, to restore those treasures of God, intercession, obedience, um, um, just being obedient to God in every way, those places that we have lost. I keep hearing in my spirit revelations that talk about, wherefore, remember where you have fallen and get back to your first love. And so a lot of times we, we're excited about salvation we decided we have this strong i remember when i first got got saved i was always in the word i was doing this and doing that and then after a while things kind of tapered off but god has been pulling us back to that place of being revived and so my scripture tonight yeah that's why it took so long for me to come on here because i was going to do another scripture and god said no that's not what i want you to speak on and so i'm gonna briefly speak Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Shania. Prophetess Wilkes. Um, and so, I remember when the Lord told me, I, I never heard the story about the dry bones. And so, that's what God said he's doing right now. There's some areas in the body of Christ that are just dry. When we think about intercession, intercessory prayer, and I've been guilty of it, how many people you see Show up for intercessory prayer. God wants to revive it. How many people did you see show up just for prayer in general? God wants to revive it. How many people you see just have a, a hunger and a thirst for God like never before? Now we can praise God. Yes, and that is, you know what? That is the name of my business. Restore my treasures. And God had me had, got me focusing on different things in the body of Christ because he wants to restore these things that have been lost. And so I'm going to go ahead and start. The 37th verse says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. I'm already seeing stuff. And God caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many in the open valley. 
And lo, they were very dry. Very dry. If we even think about things that we um, eat, nobody even wants to eat dry food. And so I even hear God saying, that's one of the reasons why we cannot draw people in. Because if we're dry, they're looking at us like, hey, I don't want a part of that. Y'all dry. Y'all telling me one thing, but I see y'all doing another. So God wants to restore back strength. He wants to restore, restore back hope. He wants to restore back truth. He wants to restore back that 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 sense of longing for that first love. And so then the third verse says, and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? I hear God asking us, not can we live? Do we want to live? Because we can live. The question is, do we want to live? Do we want to put the things down that we have picked up? My sister posted something about um, the mammon spirit. And I have been talking about this over and over and over again. And that's why I am so careful when I get on here to let people know that what I'm doing, it ain't about money. It ain't about giving. If somebody laid on their heart and they want to give, that is fine. But my motives is never about making a dollar. Never. Matter of fact, God has given me ideas to sow back into the kingdom of God without doing anything that's going to cost people to make any money. Because I want areas that have been lost, the prophetic, the in intercession, areas of training people that, you know, I'm, I, 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 you can be somewhere and not even get the training that you need. And so for somebody to be able to get that, the gifts they had given me, they're free. And so I want to extend those same gifts back to the body because God wants his body restored. And so the fourth verse says, the third verse says, and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. And again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, these bones, behold, I will call breath to enter into you and ye shall live. The Ruha of God is entering in to the body of Christ. Those believers that trust God, those believers that know God, those believers that have their ears to the Lord's mouth, that is not worried about pleasing man, that is not worried about a dollar, that is not worried about themselves, they're worried about hearing the word of the Lord and speaking God's word unadulterated and, uh, and truthfully. And it says, I'm going to skip down to the seventh verse, and it says, so I prophesied. And I commanded as I prophesied, there was a noise. Lord, bring back the noise of the Holy Spirit back into back into your house, back into your seats, oh God, back into your ministries. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Now, if you all been watching my live at the beginning, I came from Corinthians and I talked about how we are one body and a one flesh. And I see now our Holy Spirit wanted me to come back to this because we want he wants us connected. We cannot be connected if we're dead. So God, be that shown the Rebakuya. So we call it back revival to the church. We're calling back the first love of God. We're calling back prayer and intercession. We're calling back truth in the name of Jesus. We're calling back unadulterated truth. Nothing hidden, nothing lacking, nothing added to, and nothing taken away. God, I even hear God say he is sick and tired, oh God, of people adding and taking away from his word so they can be pleased, so they can be satisfied, so they can have what they want. There is coming a time where God is getting ready to judge us for what we have spoken, for what we have allowed, and for what has taken place. He wants to bring his body back, but in order for his body to be revived, we have to take on his breath. We have to take on his life, on his word, and not be afraid to live. Some of us are afraid to live. Some of us are afraid to obey God. Some of us are 
afraid to suffer. A couple of nights ago, I talked about the love of God bearing all things. That is long suffering. Lord, bring long suffering back into your body. And so it says in the word, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. Prophesy, daughter. Thus says the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe unto me upon these slain, so they might live. So I prophesied, and he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood up their feet in a silly great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are whole. Are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost, for we are cut off of our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. God, we thank you right now that you're causing your land to be restored in the body of God. God, we lift up our voices and we cry out, Lord God, let your ruach cause a major storm to influx the body of Christ, oh God. God, restore intercession, oh God. Restore truth, oh God. Restore praise, oh God. Restore worship, oh God. Restore repentance, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we snatch back the dryness, oh God. And we release, oh God, strength and life through the watering of your word, oh God. Not only watering of your word, oh God, but God, we will rise up into your word. We will obey your word. And as your word grows in us, oh God, if we begin to bear fruit, oh God, in the name of Jesus, so that we can be fitly join it together, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your breath, oh God. We call it forth from the north, the south, the east, and the west, oh God. God, I thank you right now that your Holy Spirit is causing major revival to pop up all across the nations, all across Florida, all across Tallahassee, all across New Jersey, Washington, and Washington, D.C., God. I call forth revival into your churches, oh God. Revival into the homes. Revival into marriages. Revival into children, oh God. God, I thank you, Lord God, that the pestilence, oh God, and the fowls of the land, oh God, shall not eat up your flesh, oh God. We shall be restored and we will stand strong and speak what thus says the Lord. And we will move in signs and wonder, oh God. Let the uh, deliverance be restored back to your body, oh God. Let faith be restored back to your body, oh God. Let hope be restored back to your body. We cancel out every spirit that is not like you, oh God. We cancel out every spirit of witchcraft. We cancel out every spirit of confusion. We snatch back the vision and destruction, oh God, that has caused your bones to be dry in your body, oh God. And we rise up, oh God, in the spirit of the Lord. And we take in your breath, oh God. And we breathe new life within us, oh God. We thank you for new life, oh God. New mindsets, oh God. New ways and new dimensions, oh God. God, we thank you, Lord God, that we see it clearly. God, restore our eyesight. That we see the way you want us to see, oh God. Restore our ears, oh God. That you allow us to hear where you want us to hear, oh God. Restore our mouth where we will speak. Only the word of the Lord. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing added. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We call for perfect eyesight in the body. Perfect hearing, oh God, in the body. Even let our smell be conditioned to the Holy Spirit. Yet I shed. So God, God, we thank you right now, Lord God, for releasing the arm of the Lord into your body, oh God. We thank you right now, Lord God, that we will not struggle anymore, oh God. But we will stand up strong in you. We will stand up strong in your word. God, we won't take down. Oh God, get that shelter of a 
God, I cancel out that spirit of fear that if I speak something, I will be persecuted. If I speak something, I will be shunned or ostracized. God, I rise in you. God, I rise in you. God, we welcome your persecution in the name of Jesus. We know, God, the Bible says, of ourselves likewise, as you suffered in the flesh, so shall we suffer likewise in the name of Jesus. So, God, we will not have fear. We will not have be afraid because you are with us, oh God. We should not fear. We should not be afraid because you are with us. We should not fear and we will not be afraid because you are with us. Thank you for reviving your house, oh God. Every spirit that is contrary to the word of God, we release an anointing, a breaker's anointing. We come against that spirit of rebellion right now in the body. God, revive your body. God, every spirit of control, we snatch it back in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we loose, God, your anointing into the house. We will not be shaken. We will not move in fear. We will not move in doubt. We will not move in unbelief, oh God. But we will move in the mighty spirit of the Lord. And so, God, that every spirit, every power, every uh, assignment against your church is broken right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you. We send machine guns in the spirit realm. In the name of Jesus to rock the, 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 the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus, we send grenade bombs into the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you right now, oh God. We rise to new levels in you, deeper thoughts in you, oh God, that will allow us to be strengthened in your power. I release strength and hope into your body, oh God. I hope we're no longer being mammon. I hope we're no longer being people. I hope we're no longer being stuff. I hope we're no longer being things. I hope we're not only we're no longer being ourselves, but I hope it's built on the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood. So, Father God, I thank you for releasing your power, for releasing your blood, for releasing your strength, for releasing your truth, oh God. Into your body, oh yeah, I cancel the bite biting spirit. We will love one another in the name of Jesus. Revive your love, oh God. Revive your strength, oh God. Touch your people. God, you said that pure religion is visiting the sick and taking care of the widows. I release that into the body. Looking after the foster kids and the, the children that don't have the fatherless children. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we shall be restored, oh God. In the name of Jesus, let your hand establish us, oh God. And your arms strengthen us in the name of Jesus, oh God. Make your holy arm in the sight of all nations and let all flesh see your salvation, oh God. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So God, the question is tonight, are your bones living? Are your bones alive? Are there places in your life that needs reviving that is holding up the Lord Jesus Christ's body? Ask yourself, where are your shortcomings? Where are the places that God has told you, daughter, I need you to come up in this area. Daughter, I need you to come up in that area. Son, I need you to rise up. I need you to, to take on this assignment. I need you to, to stretch out on me more. I need you to increase faith in me more. Where is it that your bones have died? Ask Holy Spirit to breathe in you tonight. Because we can only live 
and move and have our being through the Lord Jesus Christ. So if there's a part of the body that is missing, we're not full. We're not operating in the fullness of what God wants us to operate in. So we have to ask ourselves, what is the hold up in our lives that is keeping the Father from manifesting his promises? Where is it that we can grow more? Where is it that we can love more? Where is it that we need to be strengthened more? Because guess what? Just like in a normal household, if a father is missing out of the house, there is, an, a, there is a shift that take place that is not pleasing to that household. Things don't get uh, properly done like they should. If there's a mother missing in the house, things do not get done as they properly should. So if there's something that God has appointed you to do that you have not done, guess what? You're causing the body of Christ to lack. Ooh, Luciana. Yes, God. So I admonish you to seek God. I encourage you to seek God. I encourage you to ask God, where are those places that are broken that needs to be healed? Where are those places that need to be revived? Where are those places that need, need living again? Is it your prayer life? Is it your fasting? Is it your giving? Is it your just obedience? Is it doubt that you're allowing to creep in? That will allow you to move the way God wants you to move? Is it fear? The, body said, the Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Last night I said, put the blood on it. God is no, we don't have any excuse for not doing what God wants us to do. The only excuse we have is ourselves. So when Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, asked a question, can these bones live? He said, thou knowest. God knows that our bones can live. God knows that our faith can live. God knows that our strength can live. God knows that restoration can live. I hear God saying, but some of us, God has given us instructions that we have not followed. Some of us, God has, has told us to do things and we have slapped about it. Some of us have put our husbands or our wives before God. Some of us have put our leaders, our pastors before God. And I hear God saying, but what about me? Oh God. I hear God saying, what about me? What about what I asked you to do? Shall these bones live? It takes the breath of God. And we get the breath of God by laying in his presence. Some of us have put our jobs before God. Some of us have has put our, our, our health before God. And what I mean by that, we engage in things more than we engage in God. God don't, don't want our whole day, but he wants some of our day. And when I tell y'all this hitting me too, it's hitting me hard. Because I'm thinking about some things that God asked me to do today. And I hadn't done it yet. So this is a this is a self-examination. We cannot be revived. When, when a heart gets revived and, and, and they've been, been dead or, or a heart comes, a person comes back to life, they have certain rules and regulations that the doctor gives them. Don't eat this. I want you to do this. Don't do that. And sometimes God revives us. And we go back to do the same thing over again. But in this season, in this hour, oh God, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, some people ain't going to get revived because they don't want it. That's why I heard God say, 
Ask them, can their bones live? Do you want your bones to live? Do you want the Ruah of God? Do you want the breath of God? Do you want your prayer life to increase? Do you want faith to increase? Do you want to get more understanding in the word? We can't say we want more understanding and not read and study the word. Do you want your bones to live? Because guess what? Some of us are leg bones. Guess what? If your leg ain't working, the body is limping because of you. Guess what? If you're listening to things that God told you to stop listening to, guess what? The body is not functioning right. Deaf ears are on the body because of you. So guess what? <laughs> if we're consuming things and doing things that God told us to stop doing, our body is not functioning. It's just like someone that the doctor has told, oh, don't eat that no more because of your blood pressure. Don't eat that more because you're diabetes. Don't eat. But you want to do this over here, but you ain't done this over here. God says, can these bones live? Will your bones live? It takes obedience after you get the breath of God. It takes sacrifice. Some people want the anointing of God. They want to be seen. They want to be heard. Let me tell you something. There's a cost. Jesus paid a price for everything. Gifts and callers, yeah, they come. But guess what? You have to maintain your gift. You have to protect your gift. There are certain things that I can't do or go or even wear because of my life in God. There are places I can't even shop or eat because of my life in God. Do I like it? No. But it's about revival. It's about me staying. It's about me staying alive. It's about the breath of God not only breathing in me, but staying in me. Just like oxygen and CO2 is exchanged so that we can live properly. We have to do the same thing in the body of Christ. In order for us to live our properly, there has to be an exchange of obedience. To the instructions that God has given us. And the word of God applies to all of us. But there's some, some specific instructions that he's given all of us to do. We can be delivered. And we can be healed. And we can be set free. But I keep hearing God say. Do you want your bones to live? It says they were slain. But when they rose up, they became an army. We are an army of baptized body believers. But I don't want my brother to lose. I don't want my sister to lose. I don't want my family to lose. Some of the instructions that God has given you oh God, relies on your family being restored. Relies on the next generation not being going through what you went through. Not dealing with drug addiction and divorce. Not dealing with, with, with anger and murder. Not dealing with depression. Not dealing with, with stealing and lying. The next generation it depends on us. So guess what? If we're not living... We can't even breathe into the next generation. We can't even restore the next generation. You can't restore what you don't have. So, Father God, I thank you for the spirit of revival. Rise up in us, oh God. Rise up in us, oh God. 
Rise up in us, oh God. Take your place. Begin to, to find those places like a flashlight. Go into those hidden places and restore our souls. Lay with us, oh God, in the night hours. Lay with us in the day hours, God. Resuscitate your body. Resuscitate your body, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And as we examine ourselves, let us be accountable for those places that need resuscitating. Let us, let us protect ourselves, God, from the flowers that come to seek after our soul. And we thank you, Lord God. You said in uh, Chronicles that if my people who are called by their name will humble themselves and pray, then when I hear from heaven, they will hear from heaven and they will hear, their land will be healed. But we have to repent. Look at those places that we have fallen and ask God to help restore us back to that place of truth. Back to that place of life. So I love you all. I pray that you're blessed on tonight. I pray that Holy Spirit allows you to grow, allows you to see those areas, because I'm telling you, I'm examining myself tonight. And I'm also remembering those areas God to told me to hold fast. Don't let it go. No matter what nobody else do, no matter whether you stand it alone, no matter whether you, you're by yourself, stand strong. On what God has given you to do. And say yes God. These bones shall live. Alright you all. This has been 31 days of prayer. Day 8. You all pray my strength in God. And y'all let's revive his body. Let's revive his body. And let's get to that place that God wants to be. In our personal lives. So we can get in place for our body to move. We are an army of a body of believers and we will do what we need to do to tear the kingdom of the enemy down in our lives, our communities, our city, our states, and our nation. So I love you all and I'll see you tomorrow, Lord's willing. Have a blessed night.